Hey guys, welcome to the Artisan channel. So as some of you might know, and some of you don't know, AliExpress has a lot of handhelds that are refurbished and some of them have even a modern touch. So uh, I picked myself up something that was very enticing to me, which is a Game Boy Pocket with an IPS display. And we're going to review it from the inside and outside to see how well refurbished it is. I have some experience with old handhelds and retro tech, so I can see if it is well uh, taken care of or not from the gunk on the inside and stuff like that, if there is. But maybe it is very well professionally cleaned, so we're going to check that out in this video to see if this is worth picking up or not. And it has an IPS display, so it is actually a good thing and a bad thing at the same time because it will drain a lot more battery life, I think, in my uh, humble opinion. But uh, we're going to check that out because it has two AAA batteries. We're going to see if it drains a lot faster than normal or not. So what I'm thinking first uh, to test it out, you know, I'm going to try Super Mario Land 2 that I have over here. And we're going to try my Easy Flash, which is uh, a flash card for the Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color. So uh, we're going to test it out because this is a lot more power hungry and it will not uh, boot at some times if the battery is not over, uh, fully charged. So that is a con of flash cards on Game Boys. But if if it is really hideous, you know, then I'm going to do a battery mod in the next video on the Game Boy Pocket and show you how to do that. Uh, so we're going to make it rechargeable and give it a lot more uh, battery capacity as well. So that's what we're going to do. And now let's get into some gameplay and test it out uh, with the second camera. So let's do somewhat of a build quality check to see how the case is and how the tempered glass screen lens is. Because this, this screen lens is tempered glass. But I have one con and one thing that I noticed on this handheld. It is, uh, number one, uh, the the buttons here are not really identical to a Famitsu 1997 Model F Game Boy Pocket uh, because they're they're maroon, not uh, black. And what I noticed as well is that the X port is the uh, link cable port is kind of rusty. Uh, let's let's zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, you can notice that it is not uh, really that uh, clean. And from the outside, that is something that I noticed. Uh, moving on to the back. The back looks good. It has no serial number, uh, but uh, that's not a problem. Uh, you know, if you buy a modernized handheld, then probably it has some other uh, features that you would be interested in than the serial number. Um, I can see some circuitry through the uh, transparent uh, look of the handheld, and it's very nice. I like it already from the outside, but later on we're going to take a look at how well refurbished it is from the inside. If you're interested in that, there will be a segment in the video about that. Let's get into this and pop a game inside the handheld, uh, starting with Mario Land 2. Let's take a look at the IPS display. Oh my god! That is astonishing look at that that is crisp wow a thing that i want to check wow the blacks are nice uh is you have a touch bar over here so what does it do you can hold it like this and it will change colors this is the most basic color this is the second color third, fourth, fifth, and then it goes back to normal. I like the reddish color, so I'm going to do that. Or you want to, I don't know what you guys want to see, but I like the reddish color. Uh, I was almost going to ask you guys a question, like I couldn't get an answer. <laughs> That's not possible. Uh, I hope you like the red color as well. Uh, so I'm going to test it out a little bit to see if it's well refurbished. All the buttons are working very nicely. That's good. Sometimes you have buttons that don't respond very well. They're not cleaned very well. So it's very nice to see that they cleaned the button contact pads. Yep, that's very responsive. Um, let's also check out the other function of the touch bar. It is the brightness control. So we can change the brightness and then it goes back to maximum. I like it as maximum because, shut up. Don't, don't go out of your shell, Cooper. Uh, oh my God, that was, that was hideous. So uh, you can change the brightness like this, which is very nice. And 
I like that modern feel of it. You know, it's it's absolutely different and it is a lot more crisp and clear. It is on par with retro emulation handhelds that I use lately a lot uh, because, but I have been longing to original hardware and feeling like that is something that I need in my life. So this is definitely something that, that gets me into the right direction because it has an IPS display. I really like it very much without opening it up yet. So that was the performance with a regular uh, cartridge in there. Let me get it out. And let's pop in a flash card and see if it boots because this is not the newest battery that I've put in there, but it is functional as you have seen. It is functional and I want to see if it has a boot loop or not. So let's see. Yeah, I saw it looping already. Let's see if it goes in there. Easy flash loading. And then it goes back to because it detects that it doesn't have enough power. Easy Flash and uh, EverDrive are power hungry, so we're going to compare them in a later video, Easy Flash and uh, EverDrive, but I don't have an EverDrive yet, so we're gonna get that later on and then compare it. But you can see that the power is not enough and it doesn't have enough voltage to maintain the Easy Flash. So let's turn that off. This is not an EverDrive or Easy Flash review video, so let's keep that for a different video. Let's take a look at the inside of the handheld and do that. There are six screws holding down the back of the case. Two of them are tri-wing and four of them are uh, Phillips head. That's not the original assortment of screws, if I am correct, but uh, it does the job and I have no complaints about that. Uh, the case is in very good condition. That's because it's a knockoff case and it's very new, not really the original casing that came with this device. And I noticed on the inside that the cartridge holder uh, co uh, connector is not clean. You can scrape it off without a problem, but uh, for the rest I noticed as well that the uh, PCB is very clean, the solder points are very nice and not rusty. And uh, to lift off the PCB we need to unfasten three screws as well as lift off some of the connections on here, which we're going to get into right now. But I noticed that the speaker is not original and is a new speaker uh, from a probably cell phone or something like that, but it does the job. Now we have the, the cable that is routed to the battery terminal to supply voltage to the FPC uh, display connector. Uh, we can pry it off because it's wrapped around the battery terminal. And for the rest, it is quite easy to get the FPC ribbon cable out of its connector. And now the uh, motherboard is free. You can pry it off uh, without a problem. It com comes off quite easily. And we can notice right away that this is a used, fairly used Game Boy Pocket because of the uh, pivot ball location being indented on the PCB. But for the rest, the PCB is in very good condition. Look at it. It is very clean and they cleaned it very well, I guess, or it was in good condition already, but the headphone jack is kind of rusty and the potentiometers for the brightness and the volume are kind of dirty. Uh, I don't think you can clean those potentiometers easily with isopropyl, uh, but the connector is definitely cleanable and you can scrape it off quite easily without a problem. Now, I'm fairly happy with the uh, condition of the device. The, Button, uh, button contact pads are also very new, which is not a problem. It's very good, of course, much better than having the used ones in there. I already ranted about the Famitsu color not being original, but that's not a problem really. If you liked this modern design and modernized handheld, then this definitely is something for you. I, I don't see any problems with it as of now. The IPS Game Boy Pocket has even become more impressive when I added the battery mod in there. Now it can drive the, uh, uh, the Easy Flash without a problem and it has enough voltage for that and, it, and it's plays for hours without a problem. Uh, we have a 800 milliampere battery in here, a uh, charging circuit from Adafruit PowerBoost 1000C uh, with a micro USB port, sadly not a USB Type-C port, but uh, I also put a voltage regulator in there to step it down to three volts and I fitted that all in here by shaving the uh, battery cavity down to none and nothing. Uh, so and now it closes without a problem, but I had to modify the bottom to have brackets to be able to close the casing. That's kind of not really that great, but uh, you know, it does the job and I think this, it's worth it in my opinion. 
So now it's rechargeable, it has an IPS display, it has a better battery life than any other Game Boy that's available without the battery mod. So the Game Boy Pocket has been brought back to life in modern age, which is very nice and I like it a lot and I'm going to play around with it a lot in the coming days. So uh, I really recommend you guys to pick up the, um, the refurbished Game Boy Pocket and I think it was really a good job uh, for what it is. You know, it has an IPS display and it drains quite faster. Yes, that's a problem, but uh, you know, if you do the battery mod, it's not a problem anymore if you have technical skills in that. But for the rest, it definitely is worth it because the IPS display made it completely like a new device and I am really blown away by it. And the link is in the description down below in case you want to check it out. If you want to see another video with the battery mod a tutorial and stuff like that, let me know in the comments down below because I have a Game Boy Color laying around and I need to do a battery uh, mod on it. And I can do that on camera in the next video if you want me to. Just let me know in the comments down below, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.